Hello everybody and welcome to Bash Course Quarantine US History, my name is Young Hank, and today we're going to learn about World War I. Alright, so the first thing we need to go over is why there even was a World War I. There were a bunch of long-term causes that didn't directly start the war, but the war would not have happened without them. First off, we have alliances in Europe that turn this from a local skirmish into a world war. In 1881, we have Germany's alliance with Austria-Hungary, then France's alliance with Russia in 1892. A few years later, in 1904, we have the formation of the Triple Entente with France, Britain, and Russia. Germany wasn't too happy with this. Imperialism was also a big factor in the start of the war because some European powers had control over large parts of the world and were actively expanding their massive empires. This meant that tensions between these powers were consistently high before the start of the war. We also have nationalism, which was where all the nations thought they were better than each other. This led to everyone thinking that their country was prepared for war and that they'd be able to take down anybody that attacked them. All of those contributed to the build-up of the war, but that was not enough to spark the conflict. What set off the beginning of the war was the assassination of Archduke Franz Ferdinand. There were a few things that led up to this. A group of Bosnian nationalists decided they wanted to do something to make the Austrian Empire mad, so they enlisted the help of the Black Hand, a secret military society in Serbia. They positioned several assassins along Archduke motorcade route as it drove through Sarajevo in June 1914. The first attempt was unsuccessful, but the second attempt was successful. Gavrilo Princep, another assassin, shot the Archduke and his wife in their car. Austria-Hungary was not happy about this and they declared war on Serbia. Germany supported Austria because of their alliance and Russia supported Serbia for their own reasons. Germany declared war against Russia to the east of them and Russia's ally France to the west. They decided to invade through neutral Belgium, who Britain happened to be allied with. So Britain declared war on Germany too. World War I had begun. The war would be fought between two sides, the Triple Entente and the Triple Alliance. The Triple Entente included the British Empire, the Russian Empire, and the French Republic. I guess the French weren't good enough to get an empire. As for the other side, the German Empire, the strongest, followed by the Austro-Hungarian Empire, and the Ottoman Empire, which was basically on its deathbed entering the war. Later in the war, Italy would throw out its neutrality and friendship with the Central Powers to join the Allies, and Bulgaria would join the Central Powers, but that's not that important. The war was hard fought as the main battlefronts were fought with trench warfare, basically digging holes in the ground for either side, and then trying to storm the other guy's trenches, but that required having to survive the area in between known as no man's land. As for the sea, the main thing to know regarding America and the war was that Germany had submarines known as U-boats that were fantastic in disrupting trade routes and ambushing opposing flotillas or just anything that crossed the eye of the boats. This was known as unrestricted submarine warfare, which was very effective, but created anger after the Germans sank the Lusitania, a civilian passenger ship. This caused a lot of anti-German sentiment and some called for the U.S. to declare war, but Wilson remained calm and relatively dovish by asking for an apology, reparations, and a promise to not do it again. In early 1916, Germany agreed to the Sussex Pledge, which basically was a promise by Germany to give prior warning and safety to civilian passengers. However, this was broken by Germany in early 1917. And that coupled with the Zimmerman telegram, a message from Germany to Mexico asking for an alliance with where Mexico can reclaim lost land from the U.S., forced the U.S. to declare war on the Central Powers and join the Allies. The U.S. ramped up wartime production and sent troops to the Western Front. As for the Eastern Front, things weren't going that well for the Russians, as in 1917, the Russian Revolution, which deposed the monarch Tsar Nicholas I in exchange for Provisional Republic and later a Soviet Union, occurred. This resulted in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, which ceded a lot of Russian land to the Central Powers. In 1918, despite a tactically successful spring offensive by Germany, they were running out of supplies, men, and morale, as Bulgaria and the Ottoman Empire soon signed armistices leaving the war. To make matters worse, there was a summer uprising known as the German Revolutions of 1918-1919 to that would replace the Kaiser. Germany surrendered in 1918. Following German surrender, the Big Four got together to talk peace. Russia was excluded because they had signed the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk, they were no longer at war. Germany was excluded because they were blamed for the war as the last loser. This left Britain, France, Italy, and the U.S. Together they wrote out the Treaty of Versailles. Before this, President Wilson had outlined 14 points. 1. Peace treaties were to be public. 2. Freedom of seas and peace and war. 3. Free commerce. 4. Reduction of the military to the minimum needed to defend the homeland. 5. National self-determination and decolonization. 6. Evacuation of Russian territory. 7. Evacuation and restoration of Belgium. 8. Evacuation of French territory and restoration of Alsace-Lorraine. 9. Readjustment of Italy's borders. 
10. Splitting of Austria Hungary by ethnic groups. 11. Independence of Romania, Serbia, and Montenegro. 12. Relinquishment of Turkish control over non Turkish peoples. 13. Creation of Poland. 14. Establishing the League of Nations. Only four of these will be worked into the treaty. Open diplomacy, freedom of the seas, free commerce, and the League of Nations. Some disarmament happened, but not to the extent Wilson would have liked. The League of Nations was formed, and although it had been Wilson's idea, Congress refused to let the U.S. join. Because of all the compromising that occurred, nobody was really happy about how the peace worked out. This laid the foundation for the Second World War that would begin about 25 years later. Thanks for watching Bash Course Quarantine, and we'll see you next time. Stay out of school, kids. The Bash Course Quarantine team is Sam Mensimer, Eamon Cole, Estella Milan, Pasha Ishak, Sarah Roscoe, and myself. Please put any questions you may have in the comments below, and we'll do our best to answer them or find someone who can. Thanks for watching Bash Course, and as they say in my hometown, oh my E-O-S-H.